So, um, hi, my name's Tanya, and I worked as a research assistant with Escape Trust uh, in the University of St Andrews in Scotland from 2015 to 2017. Um, I'm really excited to be hearing all of the presentations in this session. I'm really excited to be here talking about film and archaeology, uh, and especially about the kind of work that I've been a part of as part, as part of working for Escape, and especially all the work that we've done um, as part of the Sharp Project. Um, so today I'm going to be talking about how Sharp uses film and especially why we decided to use film so much in the Sharp project, um, especially as a significant portion of our evaluation. So I'll use one of our Sharp community projects as a case study to sort of show how we uh, create films and I'll finish with the film that we, we actually made with them. So I'll just quickly explain what Scape is and the, about the Sharp project. So SCAPE is a charitable organisation. It was designed to help research, conserve and promote coastal archaeology threatened by coastal processes all around Scotland. So since the year 2000, SCAPE has run many projects designed to help threaten sites uh, with the help of local community groups. And the latest of these projects <coughs> is SHARP. So SHARP stands for uh, Scotland's Coastal Heritage at Risk Project, which is a four-year project that ran from 2012 to 2016 and the project was designed with two major facets in mind. The first was Shore Update. So this was designed to help update the Coastal Zone Assessment Survey uh, by using a specially designed app and uh, a team of volunteer citizen scientists from all around the coast. And the second is Shore Dig, which was designed to help local community groups around Scotland complete a wide range of product, uh, projects on heritage sites that they value. So all of these sharp logos are the 14 shore digs that we created with various communities around Scotland. And the one that I'll be talking about as a case study is this one here, which is the Weems Caves digital recording project. So one of the main ways that SCAPE has been engaging with communities right from the beginning, 18 years ago, has been through filmmaking. So in total, SCAPE has produced 70 videos, most of which are available on YouTube and Vimeo. They're a bit low, sorry, but you can, you can find them on, on YouTube and Vimeo. So, and they're mainly concentrated on self-contained stories, explaining the archaeology and history of sites as told by the communities that we work with. So not really told by us, although we do edit the films, so we do have that control. So Scape has always prided itself on its community focus and engagement in this way. So, and, and these films not only make up a digital record of the projects that we do, but they also uh, are made to show as part of conferences like this, as part of websites and as learning tools. So I was lucky enough to be able to spend most of my time creating and editing films for Scape, though it's really important to point out that I'm only one of a team that does this. So especially my colleagues Tom Dawson and Ellie Graham, they're also very involved in the filmmaking aspect as well. Um, and each member of the team is expected to give input towards the final film, so every film really is a group effort. Um, Scape also has a great history of inviting volunteers or students into, who have an interest in filmmaking into the office to c come and create work and really showcase their skills. And it's actually the reason that I got involved as a student in 2010, first of all. So as part of SHARP, we really wanted to explore and incorporate different styles of filmmaking with the project. So in total, we made 35 individual films and tried to make it at least one per shore dig. So right at the beginning of the project, um, just up there, um, we had a staff member, Natalia, and two year six students um, come and make a series called Archaeology, where they would interview archaeologists, um, professional archaeologists, about things like what's their favourite find, how did they get into their career, things like that. Um, most of the other films did take the form of um, the kind of classic scape style, as it were, really quite short, very much led by the community. Um, so an example of this is the Microcopters and More, where we had some, uh, some students from iMouth talking about the 3D modelling that they did at iMouth Fort. Um, so we also created some content from pre-existing footage that was shot quite a while ago. Uh, this is one of my personal favourites. I've got this film later to show if we have time. This is a music video that I made with things that we'd, uh, with some footage that we'd shot from a lock cable um, uh, ex excavation, and I think that was back in 2004. 15, but I'm not quite sure. Sorry, that's my fault. I can, I can find out for you, though. Um, we also filmed a series of presentations at the Ask an Expert conference, which, again, created quite a nice little learning resource that we've used with students. Um, and we were also able to repurpose uh, some footage that we shot for the BBC, but was never used. So we created our own two short documentaries, uh, Moving the Burnt, Mule Burnt Mound and Channel It Brock, 
which was actually a great learning experience, and those are our two longest documentaries. So, one of the Shaw digs as well um, actually centred around teaching film skills to young people, and this is, was made in collaboration with a company called Apex in Stranra. So Tom and Ellie turned up, um, to, teamed up with this group and interviewed two local men about their childhoods uh, growing up on the RAF base at Stranra. Um, the group were then able to research, uh, interview, and um, make these films, these two films, both of which focus on one of the men's childhoods. And actually, we ended up making a uh, behind-the-scenes look, which I actually highly recommend to watching this. So that not only taught the group valuable media skills, but also about their own local history. Right, so now to the end of the project and the evaluation. As part of the HLF funding terms, we had to create an evaluation. Um, traditionally, this takes the form of a giant um, kind of big Word document, which we did make as part of this. So if anyone wants to have a look at that, it's, it's really, it is worth reading. But the team thought that the majority of people probably wouldn't want to sit down and read this whole document. So we decided um, that this would be a good opportunity to introduce more film into the project and kind of incorporate it as a companion to this final piece. So we initially wanted a 40-minute documentary, which would t tell the story of Sharp, but again decided against this um, due to its length in favour of three distinct evaluation films, as well as the Shoredig standalone videos, um, all of which were linked to in the main report. So the first evaluation film is a standalone uh, designed to be an overview of the project as a whole. It combines quantitative data with selected bits of interviews from our volunteers, with the SCAPE team and our colleagues in the heritage sector. Uh, so it's meant to be quite fun, it's quite engaging, and it really tries to sum up the project in a short amount of time. So from this footage, we created the other... Oh, sorry, I'm on the wrong slide. In order to get the qualitative data, we filmed interviews with 50 eight people, um, 50 of which were our volunteers. They're not all in this, in this block, but that's a few of them. And the interviews on average took between 10 and 20 minutes to answer a set list of interview questions that we'd made prior to this. Um, and it, they explored really the positive and negative aspects of working on the project. So from all this footage, we created two, the two other evaluation films. The first um, solely re relies on the experience of the volunteers, and the second was focused on the experiences of our team, as well as other key people, such as local archaeologists, stakeholders, and members of our main funding body, Historic Scotland. So we did encounter a few challenges, uh, technical challenges, while creating these films. So these are really well highlighted in these two clips. And the first one is the first interview I ever filmed. And the second one was one that I filmed towards the middle end of the project. So as you can see, there's quite a bit of difference in the quality of the image, uh, the composition of the shot, the background, the lighting, and even things like hiding the value mics. You can't really see it in this light, but there's a huge wire trailing down that guy's T-shirt, which just looks horrendous. Um, so really, through critically reviewing all of our work, uh, we've been able to learn and improve on each mistake that we've made and hopefully create better and better products. And these improvements um, were things like simple things like learning what white balance was <laughs> and how to set it correctly, uh, to investing in better audio equipment because we film a lot outside, uh, and even things such as implementing shooting and editing workflows, clip logging, and even standardising the file structures has helped immensely for each project. We're now in a situation where we can produce better quality material and or in an organised and structured manner, which is really important, especially for programmes like Premiere Pro, don't really suffer things being moved around too much. So it also means that anyone in the team can jump from project to project and work in a systematic way that really means that everyone can contribute with ease. So on the technical side, SCAPE has invested heavily into some, a wide range of professional equipment, but more importantly, SCAPE has invested time into learning this, uh, how to use this equipment properly, though it didn't really look like that from the first slide that I showed of the interview. Um, as a filmmaker in Scape, you are given the opportunity to learn about the practical and theoretical aspects of filmmaking that I feel is reflected in the increasing quality of the films produced. And for myself, having no professional training or qualifications in film, just a real interest to learn, it's been fantastic that Scape has allowed me the opportunity to improve my skills. So we have had a lot of great feedback from our volunteers, also from our directors and other heritage bodies. 
Um, we believe that by creating short, high quality and engaging video content, we can reach a wider audience and engage in a meaningful way with a large range of people. However, I would like to see in the future an increase in promotion for both the YouTube and Vimeo sites and kind of more of an emphasis on creating or building an online community that I believe would increase views. So these two viewing uh, totals, that, I forgot to put that on the slide, that's viewing totals since these channels have been active. This one has been active for years. This one's been active for maybe a year. Uh, it's not, there's not as many views as I would expect for the amount of, uh, the amount of content we've got on there. So, what's the future for the films at Scape? Well, at the moment, Scape is com completing a project looking for the Royal Dockyard at Higgins Nuke in Earth, and they uh, they've been releasing little bits of film. This is kind of a, the archaeology bee dance. It's actually pretty, pretty interesting, and it's only nine seconds, um, as well as working on a larger piece. Um, there's even more footage that we'd previously filmed that needs to be re-edited and released, so if you do want to go to, onto the YouTube and Vimeo, there's always stuff coming out. So now let's talk about and have a look at the case study. So Weems is located on the south coast of Fife, overlooking the Firth of Forth. The site's home to a number of caves which contain Pictish carvings. The, in fact, Weems contains the most number of Pictish carvings in the world. These carvings take the form of abstract symbols, animals, mythical beasts, and what could be the earliest rep representation of a boat in Scotland. The caves also contain early Christian crosses, Victorian graffiti, and more modern graffiti. And the caves have attracted a large amount of antiquarian interest from scholars who have studied and recorded this site extensively. All of their contributions have led to the creation of an extremely valuable resource, which is increasingly important given the immediate threats to the site. The first of which is erosion. Uh, with the closing down of the mines, mining waste was no longer being de deposited on the beach, so coastal erosion started to take place at quite an alarming rate. And the second was vandalism and antisocial behaviour. So in 1986, a car was driven into Jonathan's cave and set a light to, which caused part of that cave to collapse. Um, and though there hasn't been any more car fires in recent years, there's still a lot of antisocial behaviour today. So thankfully, a local community group called Save the Weems Ancient Cave Society, SWAX, uh, was formed in 1986 after the car fire to help protect the caves, their carvings, and to help educate uh, people about their his local history and their importance. So in 2013, SWAX and Scape... Oh, sorry, that was SWAX. Okay, so in 2013, SWAX and Scape embarked on a collaborative digital recording project as part of the SHARP project. So the idea was to create an interactive map of the caves and the coastline that people could use to explore the caves, have a look at the carvings, as well as learn about the local history of the area. So combining a variety of recording techniques, which included laser scanning, reflectance transformation imaging, uh, RTI, photogrammetry and structure from motion, uh, the website was created. It was actually launched last year. And I am, um, oh, again, the, uh, the, the thing there is just off the page, but I absolutely would encourage everyone to go and have a look at it. If you search for 4D Weems Caves, you'll find it's 4dweemscaves.org. Okay, so as part of this, then, we, we decided to uh, make a series of videos um, to help illustrate the rich history of the area and of the caves. We dis after discussing with SWAX, we decided to make four different films in different styles and feature them in the caves that best suited them. So in the Court Cave, we interviewed an ex-miner about gambling games played there. In the Well Cave, we had a reenactment of the Hansel Monday procession. In Jonathan's Cave, we made Standing on the Shoulders of Giants, a history of recording at the caves, and that's the film I'm going to show at the end. And in the Sliding Cave, uh, we interviewed a local archaeologist about the history of picks in Scotland. And the idea was that you'd go along to the cave and you'd find all the carvings and then you'd be able, be able to explore that cave further through watching the video. So in order to make these uh, films with the community, um, storyboards with it for each film were created and approved by the SWAX committee. Costumes and props were sourced from local uh, organisations, in including the Kakodi uh, Players and the Bayer Theatre, two local theatre production companies. And a couple of weeks before filming, we were lucky enough to find someone in the area area with a genuine 
1896 half plate Sanderson camera, uh, who not only agreed to lend us this camera, which was amazing, but he also uh, wanted to be filmed. So that was even better as well, because I didn't want to touch it. <laughs> so we decided to shoot most of this footage over a weekend in uh, the middle of February with a cast of 15 local volunteers. And though none of the volunteers had signed up for film, that had signed up for the filmmaking had acted very much in the past, if at all, um, they really sh uh, the, the work that we've been doing with them to gain their confidence and their trust really really shone through, and it met, really helped to make the whole team feel comfortable and encourage them to give really good performances. Although some people needed less encouragement to give better, uh, really good performances. So back at the office, after downloading and cataloguing all the footage, additional dialogue was recorded, and the first of many, many rough cuts were created using Premiere Pro. Uh, we also used After Effects to help uh, introduce some special effects elements or to just clean up some footage um, that, that had kind of gone a bit awry, awry on the day. So this is an example of a procession scene from the Hands on Monday reconstruction. Um, when we first filmed, it was really dark and misty and rubbish, which was perfect because we needed to make it look like it was filmed at dusk. However, when we set up at a better angle, the weather got really good, which was no good for us. So using um, After Effects, we were able to make it look like it was dusk and kind of clear up a few of the mistakes, including water on the lens, things like that. Um, so we actually made it look a little bit more like it looked five minutes before actual, actually filming this. And talking about um, music, music was also, uh, music and sound was a high learning curve on this project. Um, so with regard to music, we use a, uh, a site called Audio Blocks. Um, we've used them a lot on subsequent projects. And for the Hands on Ones A Procession film, we also managed to get hold of the Pitt and Ween Choir, who again allowed us to be filmed, uh, allowed themselves to be filmed as well as their music recorded. So overall, filmmaking was not quick. Uh, not easy skill to master and when working with members of the public who can be put off easily by a giant camera lens being shoved in their face um, it is it is quite a difficult thing to do but the skate trust has spent many years uh, making links with communities and helping to foster trust and an ongoing interest for these sorts of projects and the interest is an important part um, as well as learning and teaching filmmaking skills so the result has been a number of films that both us and the communities that we work with take immense pride in showing. And if you'd like to see more of our work, then again, go on to YouTube and Vimeo. And uh, until then, I'm going to show you Standing on the Shoulders of Giants, a history of recording at the Weems Caves. Oh, that's not the mouse. Oh, is there sound? Where's the... Oh, is this it? It's meant to be a silent film anyway, so you don't really need to hear the sound. But <laughs> no. Sometimes it's at the front. No. no, I think it's been covered up by the... Uh... Oh, okay, so it's a good thing that this is a silent film. Oh no, there we go.
So the look of fear on Pam's face as she held up.